In this video, we'll talk about the use of polarization in photographing your artwork, particularly oil paints and acrylic paints, things that get shiny and give off spectral highlightings or bright spots uh, when you're trying to photograph your artwork. So in order to get rid of those, some of those bright spots you see on the canvas, we're going to put the polarizing filter on the lens. Here you can see that I'm putting it on right now. And as you turn that polarizer, you can see physically right now that the the painting is changing. So what we want to do is find that spot, turn that lens filter, and find that spot where we have the least amount of uh, highlighting on the canvas before we take the picture. So here once again, we're going to dial it in, and it looks like there's our sweet spot right about there. So now that we've taken our uh, photographs, let's take a look at them. I've gone ahead and brought them both in from Photoshop and spared you the time of watching me import them. Here is the first shot that we took and this is the one with no polarization on the camera and you can see there is a lot of spectral highlighting here. <clears throat> you have a lot of highlights here on the canvas, particularly in the dark areas where it's very varnishy and that's common with oil paintings and acrylic paintings. With the polarization and the final shot that we took, we get this. So you can see there's quite a difference. Now, we still have some problem areas up in here, down in here, but we can try and fix those using some Photoshop tools uh, and we can mitigate some of those issues. But we've got a great head start as opposed to this. Now I'll start by saying that if I wasn't doing a tutorial here and I, I didn't really want to show the spectral highlighting, um, <clears throat> I would try to get a better shot out of the camera. Um, in this case, I, I went ahead and shot it a little bright, um, so we do have some problem areas to work with. But when you see this coming out of the camera, it's a really good idea to um, underexpose your photograph a little bit and, and work with your lighting so that you have to do this as little as possible in Photoshop. So we'll go ahead and start by just tossing out this non-polarized shot. We don't need that. This is the one that we're going to be working with. Now. Um, in many cases, I'm going to crop into the picture, um, into the photograph right at the beginning, but in this case, we're going to go ahead and make use of this color card. Since we've shot polarized, our colors are going to be off uh, just a little bit. And uh, there are two ways of dealing with, the, well, there are a number of ways of dealing with this. Um, the most professional way is to shoot a special color card um, called an SG card. It's, it's the one that we use. Um, and create a color pro profile under polarized settings and put that in your camera so that you're telling the camera what the proper ICC profile is under those conditions. In this case, what we're going to do is um, editing after the fact. And we're going to start by using curves. Um, image Adjustment Curves, or Apple M in Photoshop on the Macintosh. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select that gray tone. I'm going to select one of these and look at how these color change. You can tell that it cools down just a little bit. <clears throat> and the colors look closer to the original. Now you don't see the original, but it's sitting next to me here in the room. If I select this one, um, you can see it changes slightly again. You can choose between these. I'm going to select this middle one because I think that's the one that gives me the best overall result. You can also select white points and black points um, to adjust your curves if you have a color card in your painting. Um, you have to be very careful with what they do. If you look at this, it's brightening up the painting and that's really not what we want, particularly not at this point. We might do it later, but not now. Um, because for the time being, we're trying to get rid of these, these problem areas right here. If I select the black area um, on the color card, probably the same thing is going to happen. It's going gonna, it's gonna to overdo what it, I'm after that's way overdone and so we're gonna do Apple Z or control Z on Windows to undo that and we're just gonna using the middle gray point we're just going to go ahead and stick with the setting right here um, and then move on now usually when you have a problem like this there's not any one thing that you can do there are a number of different things that you're gonna have to do to mitigate the, the situation you're gonna have to do it in steps now, the first step that I took um, with the curves, I went ahead and did destructive editing. In other words, it was not on a layer, um, and there's kind of no going back except for history. But some of the other things I'm going to do here, I'm going to do with layers. So 
My next adjustment is I'm going to do curves again, but I'm going to do it in an adjustment layer. If I select curves here, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the black point and I'm going to select the black on this color card and you can see that we've completely blown out the black areas of the painting but much of the spectral highlighting has gone away it's way overdone though what we can do now though to adjust that is to go ahead and go up to the layers palette here where we've got the curves layer and I'm going to take that opacity I'm going to roll it back I'm going to roll it back to where I'm comfortable and now it's on its own layer the painting's a little darker than I like there but uh, we're going to roll it back to about 30 percent which is about what the painting looks like in real life it's a dark piece um, and so you can see that these problem areas here have have been isolated a little bit further and we can once again move on I'm going to call this curves black so we know that that was we adjusted our black point only if I were going to adjust the white point with curves at this point I would do another curves adjustment layer I'll just do it here for your benefit um, I will say curves again we're gonna call this white so now uh, our white point or black point for curves are being adjusted on different layers and we can change the opacity separately for them you can see it brightened up a little bit here um, and I like what it did to her the body brightened up so if I click on the eye here to turn that on and off I see you know I like some of these areas brighter but certainly not the background now what we can do is is we can start isolating our adjustments because we've got layers so I'm gonna take my eraser tool here and I'm just going to on on the white layer I need to make sure I've got a fuzzy brush here on the white layer I'm gonna go ahead and, and erase these areas because I don't want that brighter I'm gonna just roughly erase that right there and I'm gonna arrest, roughly erase this right here because I don't want to brighten up the areas that I'm trying trying to resolve and you can see what's happening here inside the layer the black areas where I'm erasing now are being unaffected by that curve adjustment um, and I'm just gonna darken up that whole background and there we go so that's our first step towards resolving some of this okay now if I want to fix these final uh, spectral highlights here I'm really gonna kind of have to go the last mile so at this point I'm gonna go ahead and crop out the color card I, I really don't need it anymore um, and it's kind of getting in my way so we're gonna crop this image and just sort of do a rough crop here now one of the nice things about the crop tool is that if when you've shot your painting um, it's a little bit crooked you can actually use the crop tool to here in Photoshop you can grab the corner there and rotate it back and forth until you get get the painting square so when you're cropping into it you're not cropping it crooked uh, and you can make up for shooting it just a little bit crooked okay now that we've cropped into it and we've uh, done some of the basic things we're gonna do just a little bit of surgery on this thing to try and get rid of some of these last spectral highlights I'm gonna go into the quick mask tool typing I'm going to go into the quick mask tool typing Q in Photoshop here and I'm what I'm going to do is um, using the brush tool in quick mask I'm going to brush this area right here I'm going to kind of isolate some of this background now what we're going to do is we're going to paint into this using 100% opacity on the brush I'm going to paint into these deep areas right here once again using 100% opacity on the brush we don't need to go into these white areas or yellow areas there and we really don't need to get perfect on it we just need to kind of isolate that area a little bit I'm going to erase that little bit right there now I'm going to take the opacity of the brush I'm going to move it back to about 60% and I'm going to oops brush brush opacity 60% and let's try that again okay and I'm gonna brush into this area now you can see what that's gonna mean is I'm not gonna have quite the coverage 
that I did in the beginning spot. I'm going to move out here like this. I'm going to move out like that. And what we're going to try and do here is very subtly fade out the effect um, that we're going to apply after we exit Quick Mask. So that's at about 60% opacity on the brush. Now I'm going to move back to 37. I mean, these are just kind of random numbers. What you want to do is sort of feather it out so that the eye doesn't notice the transition in your lighting adjustments in the areas that you're fixing. So there we are there. I'm going to press Q again to exit the quick mask. And then I'm going to press Shift Command I for inverse. <clears throat> you can also go up to the menu here and select inverse. And now we've got these areas selected that we painted out. It's probably a very good idea at this point to go ahead and um, create a new layer from your selection here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new layer from our selection. So we're going to do type Apple J and we have a layer now that is just the areas that we want to work with. So now we've got the layer um, separated, we're going to go up to image adjustments levels and we're going to adjust the levels on the layer that we've isolated, that background that we've isolated. So what we want to do here is play with this slider right here and we can go ahead and darken that just a little bit. So we've changed the levels in the areas that we want to work with uh, at 80. Let's try, let's try 85, 85%. Now they're not perfect, but look at what we've done. So there, you've got a little tiny bit right here, but that looks really good. Um, it's something that you can present to people. It's something that you can certainly use for collateral. Uh, you might not be able to do very high-end prints with it, but this is certainly something you can do you know, cards and collateral and look great on your website. It's good for a submission. We've really resolved some of the camera issues that came along with trying, trying to shoot that. And we've taken what was already a, a good shot with the polarization or a, a decent shot and we've really gone the extra mile with our editing and cleaned it up so um, that it's fixed there. Well, I hope this brief tutorial on, on using polarization to photograph your artwork has helped a little bit. Um, that was indeed brief, but should give you a good overview of some of the tricks. Um, certainly not all of them, but a few of the tricks available to photograph your own artwork and make it look a little better. Do be sure to check out our website, www.bellevuefineart.com, for printing and scanning needs. Thanks.